2 about the current state of the Apache flight model. Actually, we do not intend to get into great technical detail. All of the topic as a whole is so complex that we cannot only scratch the surface here, but cannot cover much of it in detail. I will address things that I think are strange or unusual, but I cannot say with certainty how they will behave in practice. But again, common sense and the realization of physics is always the same. Before we get deeper into the subject, a few notes in advance. I have flown Bell 47 and Bell 206 Jet Ranger and Long Ranger, MD 500, Schweitzer 300 and Robinson R22, but never an Apache and probably never will, unfortunately. But some principles apply. With a pilot private helicopter license for example, the FAA says you can fly anything that weighs less than 1250 pounds or 5669 kilograms. Whether that works in practice is another matter. No matter what type of aircraft I fly, what I don't want to see after takeoff are warning lines of any color and generally warning signs of any kind. Regardless of the regulations, however, helicopters can be divided into groups just like motor vehicles. A Gazelle, for example, has a weight performance ratio of 1 horsepower for about 3 kilograms weight and flies like a sports car. Or Kiowa with 1 horsepower for 5.15 kg is more like a minibus. The UH-1, 1 horsepower for 4 kg, performs better, but is limited by his rotor systems. Whereas the UH-60 Blackhawk with 1 horsepower for 2.5 kg has 40% more power than the UH-1 and still flies like a truck. The Mi-8, with 2 times 1950 horsepower, approximate 3.3 kg per horsepower, can quite keep up. But we are talking about the Apache, and there the ratio is about 3.7 kg with maximum load, and therefore not so bad in comparison. To accelerate the mass of the helicopter, however, the energy expenditure rises in square, and there results a completely different picture. With the same weight power ratio, the heavier the helicopter, the more sluggish it is. Of course, other factors also play a role, such as the rotor system already mentioned, and especially the weight of the rotating mass. We will go into this in more detail. We are at sea level for our test, and the air temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius. Both have an influence on the so-called pressure altitude, which is used to calculate the power in relation to payload. Hover height, etc. However, before we can start our test, some changes in the axis settings are necessary. Olof, I use a 60 cm long helicopter cyclic. It is necessary to reduce the effect of the pitch and roll axe to at least 80%. If you use a normal long stick without extension, it can be much more. Since there is no defined front, back or side on the helicopter rotor, both axes should always be treated the same. Actually, this should not be necessary with the Apache, because, contrary to popular opinion, a helicopter is relatively stable due to its rotor. It is nothing more than a giant gyroscope, and in the air when the rotor blades bend slightly upwards, under the weight of the fuselage, it is like a child's gyroscope. Not only does it want to hold its position in space, it also wants to go back again and again. The Apache with its rotor weights tons should stand in the air as if nailed down. Next would be the yaw axis or tail roller, which for me is uncontrollable in the default setting. However, what many do not realize, for a clean hover you need good control of the tail roller. In order not to lose too much tail roller effect, for instance in crosswind or fully loaded, I expectionally use a curve in the settings and limit the axis only slightly. These changes should help to take off the Apache cleanly and hover smoothly. Let's not dwell on this for long, but get down to business. While we bring the Apache into the hover in three steps according to the textbook, we also pay attention to how much power is necessary for an in-ground effect hover. We carefully pull the collective and increase the power. 
This is now going smoothly, all of, I often get a high power rotor RPM warning at this point. In a helicopter with a turbine, this can't really be the case, because the rotor is always lagging behind. This delay in response can be up to one second or more. It is also hard to explain with an electronic engine control that does not work properly. I don't use trim, so the machine drifts slowly to the right and the correction needs a little bit of effort. However, with the axis corrections made, the aircraft can now be hovered well and accurately at 75-78% to 78 power. Carefully, the hover heads towards the runway. This can be controlled quite well and a certain unwillingness to follow the gentle inputs feels quite realistic. The tendency to drift to the right is also noticeable and, as far as I can tell, absolutely correct. It is the thrust of the tail rotor that affects the airframe. The tail rotor itself is now precise and easy to handle. This has a particularly positive effect on hovering, because without proper directional control, no smooth and clean hover. Next, we check what effect the translational lift has on the required performance. The Apache should take off at the same load after exceeding 30 knots with significantly less than 75% torque. To accelerate, I pull a little on the collective and push the cycling forward. As expected, the translational lift becomes fully noticeable at 30 knots and the aircraft starts to climb. 61% torque is now indicated, about 15% less power is required due to the rolling start and clearly proves why the Apache has wheels instead of skids. At about 30 knots the required power continues to drop initially without more collectives. Again, this is exactly what is to be expected. With more collective, the power increase is then also correctly displayed. We change at this point from forward flight directly into hover out of ground effect. The power values below 10 knots are interesting. There we are, with 80% torque slightly above the in ground effect hover. And this also seems absolutely plausible to me. The ground effect is noticeable, but not a big deal. What clearly costs power is the use of the left pedal. Turning left and use against the torque requires some more power but 10 to 15% at a slow turn in hover seems to me clearly too much. Also, then the torque display gets very nervous and the values changing constantly. The tail rotor needs up to 30% of engine power, but most of it already to compensate for the torque in hover and to keep the direction. For another slow turn to the left, the drop that makes the bubble overflow should be enough. 5% more seems realistic to me. But up to 15%? We will come back to the tail rotor later. The subsequent landing approach looks quite good at first. What irritates me a bit is the oscillation. What can be recognized with the results of the takeoff is that the aircraft is still flying at 60-65% to torque at less than 10 knots and the display is jumping back and forth nervously again. It would be expected a minimum of 70-75% to 75 torque as in the in-ground effect hover, since still additional speed is reduced even somewhat more. I suspect that the flight model was influenced in a player-friendly way to avoid too many hard landings. We'll stop here, otherwise the video will be too long. In part 3 we will take a closer look at the maneuverability of the Apache.